Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. It's me, Ricky Lee, aka the Hoochie Peppy Goddess. A friend of mine told me that I should um, basically tell you my coming out story. For the people who don't know that I identify as pansexual, which means that I'm just simply attracted to human beings. I don't care what your title is. You could be straight, bi, tri, <laughs> anything. Um, as long as you're a human being, I'm attracted to you. Come on, boo. Give me a kiss. Come on. If you wanna go and take a ride with me, let's start with Halloween of I think 2000. 2004. I think. It was 2004. Wait, let me think about it. Okay, it was either 2003 or 2004. But um, all I know is my coming out story isn't full of rainbows and unicorns. And it actually helped me understand humans. <laughs> I believe I was 15. This particular Halloween, me and my siblings did not go trick or treat. Why? Because we was too old. We was too old. We stayed at home and um, my best friend came over. And mind you, my best friend was a year above me. So she was in my second eldest sister's graduating class. They graduated 2006. And they were juniors in high school because I was a sophomore. <sighs> so on Halloween night, um, she comes over, you know, we just all kicking it. And then me and my best friend, Candace, hey Candace, um, we go out to her car. By this time, me and Candace were already in a relationship. No one else knew. Some people at school knew, but not everybody. I wasn't ready to officially come out to everyone. But this particular day, we decided that we were going to go talk in the car. That's what we did. We were talking in the car. Hormones started, you know, racing. And um, we were making out in the car. My little brother came out looking for us, and i never forget she had a, I think it was a Grand Am, Pontiac Grand Am, and when you open up the door, the lights come on. I don't know, I could have sworn she locked the door, but my brother comes up, and he opens the door, and the lights come on, and he sees us kissing, and his response was, I knew it! And he runs off. <laughs> he runs back in the house. But he was like, well, my biological you. So I'm like, huh, here we go. Me and my biological mother do not have a good relationship. We don't have a relationship as of now. And this is part of the reason. I go into the house and she's waiting for me. I mean, just waiting at the door like. And I'm like, I've been outside in the car, in Candace's car. And she's like, And I'm like, no, what's up? What's wrong? Where is your cell phone? And I'm like, it's in the house. Why are you answering? I was like, I was outside. The phone is in the house. I didn't go anywhere. Just as simple as my little brother comes outside and gets me. It was just that simple. She was like, Are you distracted? Were you distracted by something? At that point, I already knew. I already knew that she knew that Candace and I were dating. She are, She's one of those people where she puts stuff out there and it's like a clue to you knowing what the hell, what she's about to do or what she's about to say or what she's thinking. So I like froze up because I'm like, uh, no. And I kind of giggled a little bit like, no, <laughs> I wasn't distracted. 
I couldn't see the porch because the big old tree that's in front of the house. I mean, it was a big old tree in the way that we were sitting outside. I couldn't see the porch, nor did I care about the porch. I was going to come back in the house. Anyway, she was like, you on punishment. I'm like, punishment? I was on punishment just for breathing air. Like, this woman just did not like me for some odd reason. But she was like, hey, if you don't want to answer the phone, then give me your phone. You're on punishment. You can't have your phone for two weeks. And I'm just like, bro, I paid for this phone. I paid for the phone. I paid for the minutes because back then we had minutes. And you couldn't do a lot of texting because you was going to be spending more money whew, sending off text messages. I think they was charging by the character. But anyway, I'm like, girl, here, here's the phone. And she's just pressing because she know, she knows that me and Candace had something going on. So she just wanted me to say something. At this point in time, she's just like drilling me, just drilling me. And she's like, of her flickering on the lights, the porch lights. And I'm like, I already explained to her. But anyway, fast forward to like three minutes. She was like, I was like, I mean, I do like guys, and I do like Candace. <laughs> she was livid. I mean, she was so mad. I think she wanted to fight me. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time, but she like she did not like it. But the one thing she did that she knew that I was not going to like what she said not my grandma okay she's talking about calling my grandma on my daddy's side now on my daddy's side they Jehovah's Witnesses I grew up Jehovah's Witness I was raised by my father with the help of my my grandmother and when I say two of my uncle one uncle was an elder the up uh, the youngest uncle Went off to Bethel, New York, to study at basically at the college for Jehovah's Witnesses. And when I tell you, I was like, "No, why you gotta call my grandma? Like, no, no, they do not like gay people." I saw how they treated my Bible study director when she came out as gay. Like. No, they shun you. They, I don't, mm -mm. there's a lot about Jehovah's Witnesses. I do not like a lot of shit that they practice. I don't like it. But she calls my grandma anyway. Hello? Yes. This is Joanne. Ricky's mother. Ricky's mother. Ricky's mother. Ricky's mother. Like my grandma don't know who you are, girl. I'm just calling to tell you that your granddaughter is gay. To be I'm sitting there like this. Really? Really? I can hear my grandma on the phone saying, Gay? Mm. What you mean? Where'd she get that from? Mm -mm. Well, may I, may I speak with my granddaughter? My grandma was like, that ain't new. She always on punishment. <laughs> Here is your grandmother. I'm sitting on the phone like, hey, grandma. She was like, what is this that I hear that you claiming to be gay? I like my best friend, and my best friend's a girl. Mm. Let me tell you, I didn't even listen to the conversation. Sorry, Grandma, if you listening to this or you watching this. I didn't even listen to the conversation. She going through the Bible, telling me all these stories, telling me how Jehovah does not approve of, you know, homosexuals. And I'm just sitting there like, mm-hmm. I understand, Grandma. I know. Okay. 
I think we was on the phone for about two hours. But at the end of the day, my grandma said that she will always love me and accept me. She will always love me and accept me. She might not condone my love life. And she said, just finish up and graduate high school. Because once you get out the house, you are fine. See, my mammy thought that my grandma was going to be like, this, this is bad. You're going to go to hell. This and this and this. My grandma was like, look. If that's what you like, that's what you like. But this is the story, and these are the rules and regulations in Jehovah's word. You gonna live your life, you gonna love who you love. Because at the end of the day, I ain't even like the fact that your father was messing with your mother. But hey, you are your own person. I still love you. Did I get that same message from my mother? No. When I tell you, she was the worst so I get off the phone with my grandma, so I got to deal with the wicked witch of the Midwest. And she's just like, how can you be in love with your best friend? That is just disgusting. You know, you gonna go to hell. And you know what I said? Well, if I'm gonna go to hell, then you gonna, we all going to hell. You gonna be driving a bus, so you got four kids out of wedlock, lot, but you... But you mad because I love my best friend. I felt like it was deeper than me just loving my best friend. I think she was more jealous that I was in love and that I had so much love for my best friend. And she just wanted me to focus on being her daughter and loving her. Mind you, I didn't meet my mother till I was about 13. Like t 12. I was three months becoming 13. So, I mean... I'm the person that I'm going to be. Anywho. She. So from that point. From that day. From that Halloween. I had already gone through two things in my life. That were tragic. To me. I was attacked by her dog. I was attacked by her pit bull. There's a missing piece of my left lower leg. Me being Captain Sabo. Went through that. Then I lost my father. I had already came out to my dad. And he was very supportive. He told me to just be safe. You know, don't be out doing everybody. You know, just because you like both don't mean that you got to go do everybody. So, I was good. And then, after I came out to him, he passed away. Gone down the line to October. And it was just a mess. During this whole ordeal, we getting, we're getting we getting into arguments. She's like, I, I forbid you from seeing Candace. Candace can't come over no more. Like, how can you do that to somebody? This is your other daughter's friend, too. And she has bonded with my little brother. I mean, my best friend would bring video games over because between myself, her, and my brother, that's what we all had in common. And we will all play videos video games together if one person couldn't pass the level then we pass the controller and the other person will try to pass the level so you she bans my best friend from coming over i couldn't talk to her she made sure to keep my phone forever she never gave me back my cell phone so that was a waste of my hard earned, earned money as a 15 year old um she, so, she felt like if she kept the phone, I wouldn't be able to talk to my best friend no more. Mind you, me and my best friend at the time, we're, we're girlfriends. We shared a locker. So, we can always communicate. But mind you, she had got so deep into my sister's head that every time me and Candace would come together or see each other... My sister will go tell my mother, like, Oh, they was talking in the hallway today. Oh, they share a locker today. Oh, they got a composition book where they write each other letters back and forth and, and share the book. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Why are you being a cup blocker? Like, why are you hating? You know that this is wrong. Mind you, our mother had a niece that was gay. Mind you, three months before all this occurred, she allowed her other niece and her niece's girlfriend to stay with us. 
I mean, you support everyone else being gay, but not me. I'm not even hurting nobody. We, me and Candace was just hanging out, holding hands, kissing each other. We weren't even doing a thing thing like that. We were just enjoying each other's company. Mind you, my best friend was there when my dad passed away. And she was there emotionally, she was there physically, she was there mentally. And my mother was nowhere to be found. She was out here in LA chasing after some man and getting her hair cut. Wow. And that's what she told her friends. <laughs> While I'm at a funeral looking at my father in a casket and I had, you know, the people who are around who actually care for me, they were there. But the person that gave birth to me, mm-mm. She'd just rather be up in LA getting her hair cut, chasing after a man that's in jail or getting her paper, her divorce papers signed from her husband that was incarcerated. Anywho, Candace being the loving person that she is and she just felt like it was just, it was unfair. She bought me a cell phone. She bought me a cell phone because it was only right for me to have a cell phone because I was in a lot of activities. I was a dancer. So I would have dance practices every, I think it was like every other day. But because I was so depressed about coming out, my mother did not accept me, but she accepted everyone else. Candace was like, you know, you need to have a cell phone because you're out doing so much. And if you need someone to talk to, I'm still here. She was there the whole time. And yes, we did have a composition book that we passed back and forth. And yes, she would buy me gifts. Can During that whole time, y'all, Candace was there. I mean, I was losing weight. My little brother was like, Sis, you losing a lot of weight. And I'm like, yeah, my skin was turning gray. It was the time where I basically wanted to commit suicide because the person that I wanted to love me could show everybody else love, but not me. And it goes beyond just the whole gay thing, but the gay, the gay part just showed who she truly was or who she truly is. I had came out to my godmother. My godmother is who I consider my actual mother. She actually helped raise me along with my grandmother and my father. She took on a responsibility of taking care of me as a baby. For a long time, I thought that she was my actual mother because my mother went off and she lived her life. When I came out to my godmom, I was at a point in life where I did not like men. I had told her what was going on in the house. She was like, you know, you can leave. And she has a friend who's in social services. And he was like, baby girl, you can go. Because what I was going through was abuse. My biological mother is abusive. And it's not just physical. She's emotionally abusive. She's mentally abusive. No person should have to go through any of those things. And with me going through trying to overcome me getting attacked by a dog, trying to love myself, then being scolded and shunned from the family because, you know, I'm gay. It was kind of just like, it was too much. Then I lose my father. That was my protector. It's just, it was just so much going on and she was just not there. And instead of trying to build me up, all she did was tear me down. So my godmom was like, you ain't got to stay there. Matter of fact, let's get your ducks in a row. Let's get everything together and you can just move out. Wherever you decide to go is wherever you decide to go. I have letters from my biological mother stating that I can leave on my birthday, on my 16th birthday. I have letters of her threatening me and telling me good luck with trying to graduate from high school because I'm going to make it hard for you to graduate. All because... I wanted to be, I want to be in a relationship with my girlfriend or best friend. So she will leave us messages. She'll leave us notes. Everyone gets notes. This is one letter. This was a day before my birthday. And it was like, she just, she's like delusional. She didn't understand what she was doing. She said, also, when you feel like leaving my house for good, do not be sneaky about it. Let me know. Give me my key and have a nice life. I'm not your enemy. I'm your mother who loves you, but I cannot keep my mouth shut anymore. Shut about what? You told everybody 
about me being gay and how it was disgusting how I was going to go to hell and all of this. She said, oh yeah, and I almost forgot. Good luck when and if you do leave my house before you turn 18 years old with registering into school because if anyone signs my name again or saying they are your guardian, they will be going to jail. I already know the procedure and I have made sure to know all my rights as far as the situation is concerned. Now, I don't know what she's talking about, sign her name again. I, I don't know what that meant. But she didn't know that I had already read the terms of emancipation. The fact that you would say good luck with trying to graduate, like, what type of mess is that? That's one letter. I have another. I have like two more. But this is like proof she was just a negative force. But anyway, so on my 16th birthday, I happily gave her the key to her house. And as I'm about to walk out with nothing but my coat, some jeans, shirt, shoes. I think that's all I had. That's it. That's all I had. And my little cell phone that Candace had bought me tucked in the coat. I, I hand her a key. She's like, I said it's your key. She was like, I was like, yeah, you, you. I have the letter saying that if I want to leave, just hand you your key, and I'm. That's what I'm doing. And she was like, okay, stay right there. And I'm like, I'm not staying right here. So as I'm trying to walk out the house, my sister comes up, of course, because she she always wanted to be the favorite of all the kids. She sides with our mother. She's just standing there blocking. She blocking like this. And then our bio is sitting on the other side blocking like this. So it's like two against one. Now, I've been in this situation. I'm used to it. She looked. She was like, she looked me up and down. She was like, I bought that coat. So I know it's cold. I'm not going to allow you to walk outside with no coat on. And I, and I was like, uh, no. I get get SSI checks. So... No, my daddy bought this coat. So my sister goes and says, Well, if it wasn't for mama, you wouldn't have those jeans. I go, I say, she didn't buy these jeans. My auntie Lisa bought these jeans. Well, if it wasn't for mama, you wouldn't know who Lisa was. And you need to take off them jeans. Y'all don't understand from that day on, I literally, like, hated who my sister was. I didn't hate her, but I just didn't like the fact that it was a lot of, like, jealousness from her to me. And I never understood why I was always on my sister's side. But this whole gay thing has shed so much light on both of these people. And right now, I'm sure that my sister has grown up to be a better person. But at the time, it was just like, I was like, wow, parents really do influence the way that their children think. So at that point in time, you know, I switched my pants or whatever. And I'm like, whatever. So I go off. I walk out the house. They try to make it hard. I simply just walked out the house. She claims that she called the police and everything like that, but they can't do nothing about it. Can't take me to jail. Why? Because I'm gone. I mean, I have the legal right to leave. <laughs> I go to dance practice like usual and it was like a huge deal. I end up leaving dance practice early and then I just went straight to my girlfriend with my best friend's house and um, we figured some things out. I ended up moving with my godmom. I went to school. I was busing myself from North City St. Louis all the way to Jennings, Missouri which is also in St. Louis. But it was like a, maybe like a 20 minute drive, but on a bus, it was like an hour, hour and a half. I'm like proceeding to go to school and I get to the school and I'm told that I can't go there anymore because I don't live in a district. I'm crying for help. I'm trying to figure out a way <laughs> to deal with the world and I just felt like if my mother is going to treat me like a piece of shit because of my sexual orientation then like what the f what does the rest of the world have out there for me I just couldn't I didn't understand I had my classmates who were supportive I had my cousins who were supportive but the person who gave birth to me was not supportive and then I realized something just clicked 
something just clicked. Ricky, you here for a purpose. You're here for a purpose. And you're going to graduate from high school whether this woman likes it or not. And that's, I got up out of there. So when I moved with my godmother and I was kicked out of Jennings High School because I didn't live in a district any longer because my biological mother decided to tell the school district that I didn't live there any longer and she didn't want me to graduate because I didn't want to live with her based off how she treated me. Tell me if that's not controlling. Okay. Anyway. So my godmother was like, okay, we could transfer you to the schools next to next to me in this school district. Now, the number one choice was Sumner High School, the school that my, gra my dad graduated from. But when we tried to enroll me into the school, they had already had a phone call from my biological mother because off top, she went looking for my godmother's uh zip code and she already knew that the public school that i could get into was sumner high school so she had already called up there and said that she was my legal guardian my mother and she did not want me to enroll into that school district because it was 65 percent gay i don't understand how she even knew the stats and the way i know that she called was because she was bragging to somebody and when we walked up there and they saw my name they were like oh your mother already called her name is hating unstable creature and i was just like what but you know there's always a way around something it didn't stop there two weeks later she called my godmom again and was like right Mind you, I was so new at the school that they didn't, e like, and I started at, like, a random time. They didn't even have me on a roster. And the principal didn't care. All he cared about was stats, and my GPA made the stats go up. So he was just like, she been coming. So my mom, I mean, my godmom called up to the school, and she was like, um, is Ricky in class? And they were like, we don't have that person in our class. And I'm thinking, like, I was like, I have my work here. Come to find out, I was just not on the roster, but I showed up to school. So, Mama, if you are watching this, while I was living in your house, I went to school every day. Every day. I didn't start skipping school until senior year. <laughs> anyway, um, I moved. So... So she was just always trying to finesse her way into my life. My thing is, you t you let me go because cause I was gay. You let me go. And now you still kind of trying to control me. She would try to manipulate with my dog. She had given my dog away to a cousin of mine. And then she would say, Oh, I got the dog back, so if you come back home, you'll have your dog. Like, girl, you think a dog gonna bring me back home? Uh, no. Then she was saying, um, I'll get you a car as long as you graduate. And at the time, I wanted a cobalt. And she was like, I'll get you a car as long as you do at school. Ooh, I always did phenomenal in school. Of course, I didn't. I was like, girl, you ain't gonna give me nothing. Because then later on, she claimed that she bought me a, a Stratus. And she was like, You want to be gay? That's why I gave your Stratus to your oldest sister. And I was like, I don't care. At the end of the day, I don't want anything that ties me to you. It's bad enough that our blood ties us together. Like, leave me alone. So with her going back and forth and telling all these lies to my godmom, it made it a sticky situation between me and my godmom. I didn't like the fact that she was being influenced by a negative force. At the end of the day, mom, I'm 16. I... I'm trying to obey. I, I was trying my hardest to obey by the rules. I would cook. I would clean. I did my homework. I was getting good grades. I went to school every day. I mean, I literally just walked to school. Like, it wasn't even a block away. And it's just, 
it was just too much and I didn't like the fact that she was being easily influenced by the person who clearly doesn't give two dogs about me. So I moved out. Simple as that. I moved out, started living with my best friend. Her mom accepted me. And because I was close, closer, like back into the Jennings school district, she was so quick to jump to Candace's mom and be her friend. Candace's mom that believed me. And every every so often she'll say, well, that's your mom. And I'm like, oh my God. I understand that this woman gave birth to me. I understand that. But you don't treat your children the way that you the way that she was treating me. It was like she was so you basically treated me like shit only because I was gay or because I'm gay. And now that I'm out your house, you're trying to become friends with everyone that's connected to me. And then you tell them lies and not just lies about me, just them like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to give you this and I'm going to do that. And then everything, I was just like, what is going on? So then it got to all the conversation. It got to Candace's mom and I could no longer live with them because it was just too much drama. And all I wanted to do was graduate from school. So I moved in with my sister on my dad's side. This is the actual, this is someone that I actually grew up with since I was a little, little bitty thing, little baby. And me and my sister, we decided, you know, cool, you could, you know, I talked to my sister's mom and she was like, yeah, come on, you can live with me. All you gotta do is pay a little, little, I think we pay like $50 or $100 in rent. I did. I don't know about my sister, but I know I paid like a little, little rent, which was cute because it just, it helped me later on in life knowing that I gotta pay bills on time and everything. And um, I enrolled in some McClure. After a while, I couldn't take... Um, me and Candace broke up. Yeah, me and Candace broke up, but we still remained friends. And I ended up getting into a whole other relationship with, a, whole, with a, a girl that went to McClure. So when I transferred to McClure, we were like together. And um, it was a lot of drama in my sister's household. And I just left a household that was filled with chaos. And I couldn't, I just couldn't deal with the chaos in that household. So my girlfriend at the time, her name is Kara. Her best friend's mother was talking to me. And I just told her what was going on. I told her, like, where I come from and how I'm not happy. And I didn't think that I was going to graduate from high school. And how hard. It's just this one person who supposed to care about me. How hard she was just making my life. So, I... So she was like, you know what, as long as you stay in school, you can stay with me until you graduate. I don't care what you do, just go to school, get good grades, do what you got to do, and just graduate. You ain't got to pay me rent, you ain't got to do none of that. And it was just so crazy to me how this is a complete stranger. She had known me from a can of paint, and she was just... She came to me with open arms. It was just so. I never. It was Tashara and Tashara and her mother. Them two. I thank y'all <laughs> because if man, man, whoo, Miss Karen. I just. Mm, mm, mm. When I tell you. <laughs> It just boggles my mind how strangers can show you so much love. But your own family just shut you down and make life harder for you. It's... Excuse me.
See, this is why I ain't put on no makeup. Because, honey, I ended up graduating from high school. Um, myself and Kara went off to college in Kansas. We moved to Kansas. And, um... I'll never forget, Kara, while we were in Kansas, Kara went on break. I, I think, because she didn't have, she, I stayed in, when we stayed in Kansas, um, I had to work, and Kara went off to, um, went back to St. Louis to visit her friends and family and to cheat on me. <laughs> and um, I get a phone call when I get off work. And she was like, babe, guess who in the gay club? And I'm like, the, who? JoJo. And I'm like, my bio? She, she like, girl, yes. And while she talking to me, I'm getting a text message. Hey, cuzzo. And I'm like, huh? And this is my cousin who is gay. And... She ends up calling me, and I got, I got Kara. I'm like, Kara, I'm going to call you back. My my cousin on the line, she like, your cousin in line with me. We both see her. And she was some ugly female. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I click over, and I'm talking to my cousin, and my cousin was like, girl, your mama in, the, in Attitudes, which is, that was the popping gay club. And attitudes with this old gorilla looking ass bitch. And I'm like, oh my God. I was laughing so hard. But then after I got off the phone with them, I grew angry. Because from 15 to 19, 18. I have been harassed because I'm gay. Harassed by my biological mother because I'm gay. And then 18, I turned 18 years old and this woman is in a full-fledged relationship with another woman. Huh. The irony, right? What? Don't make no sense. Not do it. No. So I didn't reach out to her. No, none of that. I'm just sitting there, you know, like, well, the, I got, I was angry for about 20 minutes and I cried a little bit. Yeah. But then I was like, well, she's going to live her life. Maybe she will accept me now. Tell me why I get the longest email from her. <laughs> 